This is a love letter to all the jazz musicians that I grew up listening to. New York City has been like my muse in my music. This sense of freedom and discovering music and ah, I still feel that when I was a kid, you know, my love for jazz started so early and I just remember like driving from Queens over the 59th Street Bridge, but there's that moment on the LIE where it goes up really high and you can see the skyline and I would be like headed towards like, uh, you know, um, Bottom Line or Vanguard or any of the gas clubs in the village and I knew I was gonna meet my friends, we were gonna hear music, stay for the late set. If I didn't listen to all that music and if I wasn't exposed to it, you know, through my dad who played those records for me when I was young, I would not be able to make this record and express it in the way I have. Imagery is really important to me uh, in music in general, but especially in creating this record, I had an opportunity to use that connection that I use with film or I connect images and I was taking that further. I was using those moments but also reminiscing back to moments in my childhood and my youth when I was at school, different parts of my life. I didn't want to like write a song, finish it, then move on to the next one. I would always work on a tune, get it to a certain point, then start the next idea because I really wanted everything I wrote to inform other things. It felt right. It felt like a real evolution of the pure ideas, but then me putting my kind of cinematic aesthetic on there, you know, all wrapped around jazz and New York and all the stuff that I grew up listening to. I'm just hoping that uh, because of that process that people find ways to really connect their imagery and their, uh, their emotions and feelings and experiences to what I've written. Literally, like, we, you can go yeah. home now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>I probably write my best music just walking the streets of New York and looking at people and observing life. I think, um, I think to be a good um, conveyor of music or art, you have to be an observer, and it's a lot of what this record's about. Yeah, just wipe the lips a little bit. Mm -hmm. Good. Can you pop the hands out in front of you? Great, let's take a picture. It's five bucks. <laughs> um, do you do Venmo? Just Venmo me five, five bucks and I'll dollars? take your picture right oh, yeah. around the corner. <laughs> like the guy in Princeton? Yeah, yeah. Juan understands me from the musical end and from like, a, you know, uh, that part of like what, you know, in fact, it's funny, we did a lot of research. You know, Juan always asked me like, you know, what kind of vibe are you feeling for the shoot? And I sent Juan like a lot of 60s and 70s beautiful, beautiful album jazz album covers and all that Gil Evans and Miles stuff. Like, I see those photos of them and like, that's just like, that's inside of me. You know? So that's what I wanted to, to bring out. And it, you know, it's, it's there in my music and hopefully you know, now we're capturing it visually. I'm here with my dear friend and incredibly talented photographer and musician, Juan Petrino. And um, Juan is, uh, we met through some mutual, uh, mutual friend. Yeah. Right. We have had more incredible dinners and <laughs> wines. That's right. Uh, it's all rooted in booze. And <laughs> holiday and parties. Comedy. And he's documenting today and ultimately taking some photos that I'll use for the uh, album. Why can't a film composer? take a leap over and express himself through his early jazz roots and your upbringing, your formative years were all in jazz. Yeah. Walking the streets of New York as a young kid. Totally. I love that side of your story. Hey, can you take a step toward me? Okay. Even more. Good. And don't look at me, look at uh, this corner of the, where the black We went into a studio that I work out of a lot. It provided Juan a nice backdrop. It provided me like a real comfortable place to play some piano have my music on in the background and just feel the energy. Here it is, this, I played, not this very trumpet, but I played trumpet since I was five. My dad played. I love the instrument and so much of the album has got some 
trumpet writing that's so specific to like how much I love the instrument. That horn line is fun. You okay? I'm gonna need about four Advil after this shit. <laughs> this album is representing me working with all these musicians that have been so instrumental in my development. I mean, these are people that I met, you know, when I was 20 and just out of college, out of Manhattan School of Music. And like as their careers have developed and they've done things, like they've always been a constant in my life. So good. It's really fun for me to be here. Like this is not normally a thing, a situation that I would seek out. Like, oh yes, that's film me a lot. Because you're modest. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, just I, I'm much more um, um, able to express myself through music. But get me to talk about my music, and I think you know it's a big difference. So this is a track called "The Conversation," and uh, it's one of the newer ones. I. You know, I saw people eating outside in one of these COVID restaurant eating pods, and I saw their their faces and how exuberant they were of just like wanting to talk and communicate, something that we've all been missing a lot. And the sax, alto sax, tenor sax, trombone, and trumpet, all one character. Woo! That's beautiful. Yeah, this is a great solo. Into this light right here. Right into the middle of my light here. It's a glazed donut? It's a glazed donut. It looks really good. <laughs> In film, I'm looking at stories and I'm looking at plot and things that happen and I'm you know I'm looking at it and, and funneling it through a composer's eye but then I have to view it as the audience and I have to be really clear that I'm telling a story as an audience and not as a film composer. I started on this and it was scary because I didn't have a lot of experience writing instrumental music without picture, without film. I you know my whole life I've been working to film and pictures and TV and documentaries. So it was like me jumping off the ledge. I took the leap. I think when times are tough or challenging, take a leap, because uh, you learn a lot about yourself. Get the moon up there, right? It hangs over us. That, that will bring out something in me. You know, that makes me feel something. Collaboration is such a part of a film composer's life. You know, collaborating with the filmmakers, the editors, the producers, and anyone that might be involved. It was sort of like this cathartic thing, and it's a, it's a thing that we, we all needed. We all needed personal connections. So now, through this record, I'm like, you know, smiling and laughing, talking about music and getting excited, and all the musicians were so into that. already has inspired some other people to instead of feeling uh, despondent or hopeless, they're like creating music. And look, we're creating music in new ways, right? People are now recording in their home studios, sending files, so it's collaborative in a different way. And even though that's not the way we're used to, it's still a beautiful way of communicating. This is the last uh, track on the album. It's a really short, um, no? Just this like, almost a very pure moment of just like resolve. Like, uh, I finished this album and this is me as a person and as an artist and I just thought there was something really right about ending this in a really gentle, pure way. See, this is the resolution of like, yeah, here I am, all gonna be okay.